Uh, speaking of Boston, we got uh, Steve Sweeney on the line. Oh, he probably wouldn't know the answer. Steve Sweeney. Yes. We have never talked before, sir, but I'm a big fan of yours. This is Opie from the Opie and Anthony Show, and we got oh, you Jim know Norton. What? I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, I remember when you guys were in Boston. Yeah. And you said that the mayor passed away. Do you remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of. I was never a big fan of the mayor, so that that was uh, the last time you were here, right? Uh, I was just up there. Jim Norton was taping a, a, a special that's coming out soon, and uh, I just happened to be up there as Mayor Menino is telling you know Boston that he's stepping down, basically. We're not. Did uh, you gonna... hear it? Did you hear him? Yeah, we have made fun of his speech for many years, sir. Yeah, the uh, the last storm we had, he said it was global warning, <laughs> and the guy who predicted it was Frank Gore. Who also <laughs> happens to be the running back for San Francisco? <laughs> yeah. What do you think it is with his speech? Do you, do you think he's dyslexic or what? What is it with him? Well, uh, let me give you an example. He came out at the well. Well, first of all, if you take, you know, a plane into Logan Airport, the first voice that greets people is Mayor Menino, and I can't tell you how many times people have said to me. What language is that guy speaking? Am I in the wrong country? <laughs> he said, well, welcome to England, and then please enjoy. And the neighborhood, Brighton, and then And then he, at the convention, he came out, he says, hello, hello. And he mentioned all the great Democrats like John F. Kennedy and Martha Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> know what he's got? He's got what fighters get is that thick tongue. Right, right. right. Yeah, so he, he, he talks like he's been batted around a little bit. Now, why? Uh, it seems like Boston doesn't like the guy. Why was he able to stay mayor for almost 20 years? He's crooked. Oh. Uh, he, uh, well, no, I, I mean, I can't say that, but that's the way it works because you get 6,000 employees in that one building, City Hall, and that's your built in base right there. They're all going to keep, keep their jobs. But now they got a whole new slew of candidates, and you guys spent time here. You know how they all talk the same way. Mm -hmm. In every sentence, it's quite frankly, and at the end of the day, <laughs> quite frankly, in the end of the day, and uh, folks. Right, and, and folks they, like Elizabeth Warren. They, folks, they, they also folks. like to say, "Kick the can." Oh yeah, kick the can down the road. Right, they love that one. So we don't go over the fiscal cliff. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. Who the frick has ever <laughs> kicked the can down the road? And we've all gone over the fiscal cliff, <laughs> right? Already. Uh, that's, they say that. I, I don't know. I don't see any difference yet, but I'm sure I will. And in, in, uh, well, now we're in April, so as soon as the, the, the taxes knows? get paid, I'm sure there will be a major difference. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. I'm, I'm not a big uh, political guy. I don't believe in any of them, Steve Sweeney. Yeah. We well, we not a one. Steve, we're obsessed with uh, Scorch. We watch his show, and we analyze it and break it down. And we were surprised to see you on it, so we figured that they roped you in somehow. Yeah, we, oh. we broke that. <laughs> you know, somebody, somebody told me that I did it, and I, you know. <laughs> well, what I, was, I was going to a warehouse in Framingham. <laughs> yeah. My friend Sib, who, who played for Boston and everything, he says, oh, okay, so now you're going to do this. Uh, Scorch, is, uh, he, he was the guy on the couch. Right. Yes. Yeah, we uh we worked uh, me and Anthony worked with Scorch at AF back in the day. Yeah. And we're obsessed with him because you know, he's got this TV show that no one is watching but in his mind he thinks he's Johnny Carson. That's why we're we're fascinated by this guy. He truly believes that he has millions of viewers and yep. that and that he's just uh, it, it's he's only days away from being uh, offered Jay Leno's job. Right. It's just days. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh all of a sudden, you know, it, we're watching the last episode, and they say, you know, he says he's got Steve Sweeney. We're like, really? Yeah. Because I, I really am a big fan. You're a funny fuck. And, I am a funny fuck. And, and, uh, it's so weird being on the radio saying that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right? yeah. On ZLX. Yeah, and you, and you come out, and I could tell you're just bothered, because it, it, it seemed like you were, I don't know, you were sold something you, that it you, wasn't. You, no, no, it wasn't that. You know what really bothered me? He... Um, Actually, he's he's a very nice guy, but no, we, I, but, I like but, him as a person. But, but, don't, but, don't get me wrong, but, but but anyway, so he's got this idea. It's kind of more like the Today Show than the Tonight Show. So he's got this cook there, you know, and they're going to do a cooking segment, <laughs> and the guy wouldn't let me eat. I said, I'm starving. I've been in this warehouse in Framingham for two hours. You're not going to let me taste the food? No, no, not until after we shoot. So I was a little edgy. 
<laughs> you seemed like you hated school. It was very funny to watch you and Sib <laughs> just talking, and then you wouldn't acknowledge. And Scorch kept trying to fucking shoehorn himself in by doing things like... <laughs> <laughs> and he, he would laugh just to kind of get the camera to Scorch, turn towards Scorch, him. Scorch. I think he was coked out of his mind. I have no, <laughs> no idea what he was doing over there. <laughs> and at one point, you said something really funny, too. You said uh, something about, yeah, you said this or whatever else you were lying about. Like, you called him out on, on lying. On his lies. Which we thought was very funny. Oh, yeah, the Man he's in Manchester or someplace, New Hampshire. Well, his show opens with a with a shot of Santa Monica Pier. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, I got it. This is open. It. I gotta see that. Show. Even though he's talking about Manchester, New Hampshire. You know, you know what? I, it's so funny you mentioned that show. I was golfing with Sib yesterday, and he said the uh, they have one sponsor, and the sponsor is editing the show. Oh, I don't like this. I like. I said, "Are you shitting me?" Wow. The sponsor, like Proctor, Proctor and Gamble goes in and, and edits Ed Sullivan. You know, it's like right. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. So the sponsor makes decisions on what's acceptable, and that's probably the only conditions on which they'd sponsor the show. That's right. Yeah. And how's how's your career going, Steve? Through the roof. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ, I just got off a cruise ship. I I, went, I I didn't do the the carnival ones. You know, that's the ones that had all problems with yeah. the toilet paper and all that. Right. Talk about downhill. You walk on board, there's a Walmart. We cash checks here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we accept food stamps. I'm, I'm working at that. Well, I'll tell you, this weekend I'm working at a nice little comedy club. It's called Giggles on the North Shore in Boston. And uh, I like that club. But, uh, you know, it, you know, the, I'm, I'm, I'm still working... Places named after the guy, you know. Have have you guys done stand up? I have, yeah, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. Oh, Sarah. Jimmy's there. Oh, yeah. Jim Jesus Norton's Christ. here and Dan yeah. Soda. Oh, wow. I love Jim. Two funny oh, guys, man. Jim Norton. Yeah, big yeah. fan. Uh, but anyway, whenever they're named after the guy, you know, like okay, you're playing at Vinny's. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is gonna suck. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a disaster when it's named after a guy. Absolutely. Yeah. You're playing at Richie's. Oh, okay, Richie's. Yeah. This and food. Then in, in in Boston. We have managed to keep the comedy scene going all these years uh, because we work at these Chinese restaurants, and to this day, after 30 years, they still don't know what's going on out there. I mean, it could be karaoke, you know, but they, they just say, oh, yeah, 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 asses in seats, asses in seats, no problem, you know. Right. So we're all still working, and that's why our careers are, you know, fucking nowhere. And you, well, came, I, you came up with, uh, who, Dennis Leary and Gavin? I, I lived with Leary for a couple of years. I did a bunch of movies. Yep. And, uh, I, you know, I keep it going. I I like to, uh, you know, I, I like the work, unlike a lot of comedians, because, you know, at a certain point in life, I hate to bring the show down, so they, they become like their acts, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's like the... The the uh, the road thing gets to them and everything, but you know I, I I have a good life here in Boston. I like it, but I got a uh, I got a show I'm producing that I think is going to be pretty cool. So is it for I'll, Showtime? Because you talked about that on the show. On, yeah, on... yeah. Can I uh, sure? Can I call your show in? Uh, call your show again when we when we get. Oh, the, of uh, course, deal? of yeah. course you can. You ever make it to New York? Yeah, I get on there. All right, let's fucking do our show next time you're down. Hey, are you I really? Love, are you really? I would love to do it. I love your show, Steve. I are you can't really believe depressed? when you said Menino died because, you know, all these people were calling me up because I've been here forever. Oh, did you hear the mayor passed away and everything? And I said, really? Huh? And and, and then Menino said, oh, that wasn't funny. I don't think I even family in the whole game. Yeah. Oh man, he was up our ass. He made sure we got fired. That's good though. That but we already knew we were. Move. We we admit it now. We already knew we had job offers in New York, so we were kind of taking some shots up there. We were yeah. taking some major chances, knowing we had a place to land. Yeah, no, it was it was exciting. You you were joking on uh, on on uh, Scorch's show about being depressed. Are you really depressed? Me? No. Oh, you're not. Okay, you were just kidding. He was just depressed that day. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. Oh no, I would. I was doing a bit. I say, you know, I'm depressed. I I went to a veterinarian and I said, put me to sleep. And he said, what? And I said, all right. If you're not going to put me down, fix me. Cut my balls off. Oh, okay. All right. I, for it was just a setup. One of those phony comedy shit. 
Yeah, but me, I'm do, I'm, but I'm doing comedy over 20 years, and I fell for it. What a fucking dummy I am. Yeah, we're like, we're like, we gotta get Steve Sweeney on the phone and talk yeah. him off the ledge. It I sounds know, like he's fucking gonna kill himself. I was, I was worried about you. I'm like, what? Well, this guy sounds really upset about something. Fuck. Oh no, no, I'm just, you know. Setting it up, baby. God, what Setting a fucking knocking him over. What a dumb cunt I am. <laughs> you are a dumb cunt. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't believe you used that word on the radio. Oh, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's, it's freeing. The, it's the only word that has any power left in the English language. Right. Everybody says fuck, but when you say cunt, ooh, that's, everything quiet. That stops everything, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the C word. Yeah, drop an N-bomb in front of it and watch the reaction you get. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Is that Norton that just said yeah, that? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's the only one in the world that would do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, think... I used to do a bit about that stuff, and I'd say, name your prejudice, you know? And a guy get up, I hate the kikes, I hate the guineas, but then there's a big South Park guy, well, I hate those niggas. And the fucking, you know, they, you get the wrong reaction, you know what I mean? Right. From the audience, from the people, you just can't use that word. Yeah, Which just, I just did. Holy shit. <laughs> it just evokes too big a reaction, I guess. Unless, unless there's a real reason to say it, it's a rough one to get away with. It's hard. Well, and people hear what they want to hear. I used to do a bit where I was trying to make fun of racists. And uh, I'd do this, I'd put my belly out, and I'd say, you know what I love about that Larry Bird? He's white. And I was making fun of that guy. Right. And people would come up and say, yeah, you're right. That's what I like about him. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but that's not what I wanted. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <Unreal. laughs> Hey, what a great show. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Steve, okay. thanks, man. Come see us, all right? I will. All Thank right. you so much. Right Take on. care, man. Bye. Steve Sweeney. Uh, That's funny. A legend. That guy's a legend. He really is.